Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ting Tang. So for this week's project, I wanted to show you guys a personal project that I've been working on with my brother. I have a pet tortoise, Salcata tortoise, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that species, it's the largest species of tortoise that exists. Um, they're also known as the African spurred tortoise and they grow, what was that? Oh nice, that's my spit. But they grow <laughs> upwards of 250 pounds and about, yay big right now we keep her inside in this little like wooden tortoise enclosure but essentially she's outgrowing that and i wanted to build a outdoor enclosure for her to be able to just like hang out and be a little bit more comfortable so yeah that's pretty much what i'm going to show you but before we get into the project i did want to show you or introduce you to my tortoise herself so give me one second This is Corn, Cornelia for short. She is a three, two and a half year old tortoise. Say hello, Corn. Here. Say hello, world. I got her when she was only a hatchling, but she was like yay big. But she is growing and she is not gonna stop growing. So I'm really excited to kind of show you guys what we built for her. If you guys like animals, I definitely have a lot of animals that live in my house. You'll probably see all of them at one point or another. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And without further ado, here is the building of Corn's Cavern slash enclosure slash spider turtle secret lair. So I hope you enjoy. So before any major project, make sure you have the appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment. Since I will be cutting wood, my PPE for today is a mask, safety glasses, and work gloves. Now let's head to the back to show you guys where we'll be working. So this is our workshop for today. Got some old scraps that was laying around in our backyard. For this project, we wanted to see if we can make the entire enclosure out of the reclaimed wood we found in the back. When it comes to woodwork or using power tools in general, my experience has been limited to the confines of a few school projects and fence building for Habitat for Humanity. Needless to say, I was a bit rusty and needed some guidance to get started. Before we got too deep into our work, we wanted to scope the area out to visualize the end project. Our plan was to make four equal walls with a stake at the center so that we could hammer it into the dirt. Once we agreed on the plan, it was time to work. Although I could probably eventually build the enclosure myself, I asked my brother to help since he has way more experience than me in building. If you have the ability to learn something yourself, go for it, but don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. This was something that took me all of high school and a good sum of my freshman year of college to figure out. Once I was comfortable with what I learned, I was off on my own. As you can see, there are definitely tips and tricks that are learned through experience. We had a lot of wood we needed to cut, so we had to measure and mark to make sure that they were all the right size. I took care of that part of the project while my brother cut the wood. And let's not forget the help that I got from Kenshin. Now for the next 15 seconds, enjoy this nice compilation of us cutting wood and using various power tools. 
If you are a kid or have not done this type of work before, please consult an experienced adult so that you can perform that task safely. As cool or important as your job may be, the most important thing at the end of the day is your safety. Now it was time to assemble our masterpiece. Kenshin also assisted us a lot on this part. Excuse me, sir. We need that piece. Hello? Hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> we had to make sure that the walls were properly secured, so we hammered the stakes deeply into the dirt so that they would not fall. Once all four sides were set, we connected the corners with screws and ended up with this masterpiece. Corn's enclosure would not be complete without her cave. It's her quarantine sanctuary, perfect for eating, sleeping, and hiding from people she really doesn't want to interact with. In order to keep it properly secured, I screwed it not once, not twice, but three times. And as a testament to our building quality of work, here is our acceptance test. We also used an old dog gate as a top barricade for the enclosure so that no predators like cats or carnivorous birds attacked her. This part was awesome because the gates measured perfectly when I laid them side by side. It was also pretty easy to remove and fasten as needed. Once the enclosure was ready to go, we brought the star of the show herself to test it out. Welcome to your new home. And of course, a home is not complete without its sign. I thought Corn's Cavern was a really cute and simple name for this project. Since my brother takes care of Corn and built the enclosure as well, it was only fair to get his input. Hence, Spider Turtle Secret Lair. And here's how it turned out. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, it was a pretty fun project. It was actually really satisfying that all of the reclaimed wood that we had in our backyard um, that was left from like the last people who lived in this house just magically ended up perfectly being just enough material to build the enclosure. I'm really excited to see how she grows into it. Um, I'll post more videos about, you know, her getting used to the enclosure and just her getting bigger as time passes. But yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit a thumbs up button if you want to see more content or more animals like her in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.